everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. Today we shall be unboxing, sniffing, and reviewing Guerlain's Mitsuko Eau de Parfum, the new formulation. Now, before we get into bashing the new formulation, saying how good the old formulations were, how amazing and incredible the first editions were, uh, let's just stop for a second and smell the coffee. And the coffee is telling us, well, the world of fragrances and perfumery is the way it is. It's going to keep changing. We're always going to be disappointed, no matter what. So, for once, instead of comparing, let's just try to enjoy what's at hand. This is what's given. This is what we got. Let's see how it smells like. Guerlain's Mitsuko Eau de Parfum. Hard to see because gold is always hard to film, but it is a 75 milliliter spray. Let's open it and smell it. Oh, there she is, the lady. Ah, okay. Hmm. Now, the original, again, <laughs> comparing immediately, but the pure perfume, let's just say, the pure perfume bottle has a wonderful glass stopper that has a perforation there. Uh, very intricate and delicate uh, craftsmanship. But I do appreciate very much that we do have a very, very, very old school sticker on it to depict the fragrance, the Eau de Parfum of Mitsuko. Let's check out what the bottom says. 75 ml made in France. Okay, let's spray it out immediately and then we're going to get into the history, reading about it. Little Guerlain logo here on the sprayer. Ah, there she goes. Mm, where she goes, nobody knows. It's Mitsuko. Ah. I find it delicious in the opening notes already. Now, top notes, okay, so we're going to see um, a couple of things here. We're going to see ingredients repeating themselves. We're going to see doppelgangers. We're going to see dark and light facets. So this, quite frankly, is pretty much a Twin Peaks type of fragrance. Very red room. For those of you who know Twin Peaks, ding! you got a point. For those of you who don't know Twin Peaks, please do Google it and check it out. It's just the best TV show that ever happened. So we got rose in the top notes. Bergamot, jasmine, and citruses. Now, the rose and the jasmine from the top notes come back again. In the middle notes, we have rose again. Ilang Ilang, which is very powerful here. Jasmine returns. And then we have the famous note of Mitsuko, which is the peach. The peach is at the heart of this fragrance. We also have lilac. Then another mysterious element, the oak moss. Is it natural? Is it synthetic? Is it still in there? Is it not? Well, I love oak moss. And this is what, sm what I smell out immediately in the top notes which is also very typical to uh, Chanel's Pour Monsieur. They use the same type of oak moss. And it's still in here, you guys. They can't really lie about the ingredients they print on their boxes. Look at this. Evernia Furfuracea Tree Moss Extract. Ha. Huh. Now, whether or not an extract is allowed to be completely synthetic is another issue. But... The Avernia Furfuracea is there, you guys. Yes, and we smell it. To me, it smells delicious. Mmm, really delicious. Um, my mouth is wandering. <laughs> it's really good. Okay, anyway, so back to the oak moss in the base notes, together with the vetiver, cinnamon, amber, and spices. All sorts of spices. Now, um, Mitsuko is classified as a chypre, a fruity fragrance chypre, marketed towards women. But quite frankly, as I just 
mentioned before, you have that note that is also that oak moss touch to it that is so typical to Pour Monsieur. Pour Monsieur says for men, for gentlemen. Um, this one has no gender. I'm sorry, Guerlain, but you didn't need to at all market it to any gender. But times were different in the past. So Mitsuko was launched in 1919, and the nose behind this fragrance is Jacques Guerlain. I'm going to read to you from the Guerlain website itself. What do they state today about their own fragrance? Jacques Guerlain named his creation Mitsuko after the name of the heroine in the best-selling novel of that time called La Bataille. Mitsuko, a beautiful married Japanese woman, secretly loves a British officer. In 1905, the Russo-Japanese War breaks out. Mitsuko awaits with dignity to outcome of the battle, nobly dominating her feelings. Now we have somebody dominating their own feelings. Jacques Erland had the incredible and daring idea of combining a chypre with a very fruity peach note, giving this fragrance all of its modernity. Designed by Georges Chevalier, its bottle is underscored with graceful scrolls typical of Art Nouveau. Its avant-garde stopper in the form of a hollowed heart represented a real technical feature at the time. The fragrance is described as fruity chypre, mysterious, balanced, velvety, a masterpiece of balance and originality. Mitsuko marries a fruity note of peach with jasmine flowers and may rose. The mysterious dry-down of the fragrance blends spicy notes with those of underbrush and vetiver. So we have emotions running here. We have Art Nouveau design, the heart that's supposed to be hollow but is not hollow in the Eau de Parfum spray form. Well, it is hollow on the inside if you check it out like this, but the actual uh, pure perfume is hollow here. So let me slide to the side and show you the bottle there of the pure perfume. Really beautiful. And there you have the classic Elan tassels in silk cut in frizzy, which I mentioned in my Jean-Paul Gaultier Classique Eau de Toilette review. Be sure to check out that video if you want to know more about the history of these little tassels and how they develop in uh, various forms throughout history of perfumery. Mitsuko opens up fresh, almost you could say aldehyde -y. Um, but there is the oak moss at its heart. I don't sense the peach that much just yet. It's more a dusty, I have more of a dusty classic type of old school Guerlain dust. And it's like an orris root type of dust mixed with more orris root and more iris and almost it, it's as if you blended a cinnamon with the oak moss and vetiver and you obtain an imitation of orris root Conceptually speaking, just like Mitsuko hiding her feelings, dominating her own feelings, it's as if the orris root, which should be at heart here, is not there. It's hiding itself underneath layers of vetiver, oak moss, and cinnamon. So there's an illusion. It's like a double feature. Which one of the two is it? Do we smell the copy of, of the emotion or do we smell the emotion? But isn't the emotion already in some way, shape or form an illusion? An emotion is triggered by so many external factors that combined with internal factors, psychology patterns, and a lot of external factors, it, it develops that way. That's how an emotion is born. So it is a very fragile thing in emotion. An emotion can have many different facets and it can be a positive or a negative emotion. It can also be positive and negative at the same time. And Mitsuko plays with that concept, at least to my nose. Let me smell it again. It 
It screams at you, but silently. And I guess this is this description of dominating its own emotions. Y you know it's there, but it's chaining itself. Like all the scream that it throws out into the world, it immediately chains it up and pulls it back in and reins it back in. And it's a con it's a constant struggle. It is so stressful, <laughs> but in the best of ways because it's drama at its purest form. Because it's drama without being overdramatical. It's not the type of drama where you uh, throw plates at each other and uh, cutlery cups and glasses and you just and, and flowers and vases or vases that you just like you know, good old school classic telenovela fight or cat fight. No, this is a different type of drama. This is a Greek type of drama where if somebody's throat gets slit, you won't know it until it happens. And the person whose throat is getting slit will allow it to happen because that person has so much dignity and respect of themselves that they would rather die than live under unjust circumstances and uh, under an unjust system, if you may. System which can be personal, of a family, but also political, of the government. So Mitsuko is everything. It's literally annoying, but it's inviting. And as much as I hate classifying perfumes through age, this one does smell ancient, but it also smells like it came from the future. Why does it smell like it came from the future, even though a lot of its notes and the type of composition it has is very old school? Well, because there's a crystalline top to it, like this aldehyde concept to it, which is not listed here in the notes, but it sparkles in the opening notes to me. So um, it sparkles so much that you have the feeling you're amongst the stars and they're twinkling and they're very heavy. And they're very heavy because you're coming very close to them. And you can only come so close to stars if you're in a very, very modern futuristic spaceship that actually can travel towards a star without being burnt to a crisp, melted and sucked in if coming too close to one. And so fascinating, again, this vision of the future, because I have the feeling I'm in this spaceship and I'm orbiting a star. And yet the spaceship is so avant-garde and futuristic that... It's cool inside the spaceship. I don't feel the heat of the sun or the sun of the star outside. But I know how the warmth of the rays of the sun feel on my skin in summer, for example. So I have a memory of that heat, but it's not hot. This fragrance doesn't have heat. It's very cold. It's very calculated. It's a mathematical equation that functions. It's physically speaking... a sort of groundbreaking acknowledgement of some, all of a sudden, of some new added force of gravity. Now, we know that the force of gravity is the force of gravity, but what if you could conceive a force of gravity that does not obey the laws of physics that we know on planet Earth? A different type of gravity. It's nevertheless a force of gravity, but different decontextualized and then rebuilt in a completely different context. Use your imagination. Don't try to use the laws of physics and logic to feel and understand this fragrance. Let it just take you over. And it's very confusing in the beginning because a lot of you probably that have smelled Mitsuko probably will say, oh, yeah, it smells like my grandma. But if you really think about it, a lot of you will also think, hmm, I've never really smelled something like this before. This smells like it came from the future. It's that good. If you're into that sort of confusion, if you're into that sort of manipulation, if you may, because this one kind of does manipulate you into certain feelings and moods and vibes. Smelling it now? It's so cold on me right now. There's this immense powdery touch but unlike Chanel number no. five, here's another mistress of the night and of the dark when it comes to powder and it's not sweet, but and I'm and I'm comparing the two other parfums here quickly just because they're both other parfum, but 
This one is a child of the 80s in this concentration. Nevertheless, both have ilang ilang. Both feel quite powdery, except this one. This one also plays with the rose and the may rose, but here the ilang ilang and the may rose in particular are like vroom. They just fly into the sky. Here, they're subdued. In the first spray, I felt the ilang ilang a lot. But I don't right now. And now we're somewhere in the mid notes. This one is cold. This one, at a certain point, will warm up on your skin. And it will... It will stay powdery, very close to the skin. And there's a comforting warmness, the presence of the now. Timeless. This fragrance is timeless, but it will give you the feeling of now. Meaning, when you wear it, that's exactly the right time to wear it. That's, that's the magic of Chanel Number no. 5. Anyway, please also be sure to check out my Chanel Number no. 5 reviews. There's a lot of them on my channel. Links are in the description down below. So Chanel number no. 5 is the now. This one is always evading me. It's, it's the tomorrow and it's cold. It remains cold on the skin. It's a bit frightening that way because it disarms you. It makes you feel... I'm smelling it again. It makes you feel distant from your own self. It's like it's collecting data on you and information about you, about your emotions. And with every new information that it collects, it archives it. And as it archives it, it frees up or expands somehow its storage, its data storage for more emotions. And it just collect and once it collects and archives that emotion, that emotion is gone. So you you don't have any time to really twirl yourself in that emotion, relish in the emotion. The second you feel it, it's sucked out and another one comes by. And it's a constant flow. It's very refreshing that way too, because it doesn't let you anchor yourself to one particular state of mind and emotion. You're splitting yourself up. Very disorienting and scary. But once you get a hold of it, and by getting a hold of it, I mean once you learn to let go of it and let it just flow, then you're riding the horse. You're riding the Mitsuko horse all the way to the stars and back, basically. You're, uh, you are on some sort of fragrance high. Definitely. Definitely. Mm. And those spices and that bit of amber, but the amber is still not there. Usually a Guerlain amber... It warms up everything, and everything becomes more resinous at a certain point. But we're not there yet. This one, I have the feeling, is going to last quite a bit on my skin. So getting to the dry down is going to take a while. I wonder if the amber is going to heat up through my skin and kind of take a little bit charge over the oak moss and over the um, vetiver and the spices. Maybe the amber will join the... Um, lilac at a certain point. Now, lilac here, it's not that I'm really smelling it out right now, but despite the fact that this liquid is yellowy, the lilac is giving me, I mean, I don't know if it's the lilac giving it to me, but I do smell out a lilac color. Now, we know it's kind of hard to give smells to colors, but I try to do it sometimes, and um, Giorgio Beverly Hills to me is yellow. It's the most pure and beautiful of yellow colors, for example. Um, and Mitsuko does have that in its cold heart, it has lilac. Lilac is a cold flower. But I wonder if that amber is going to punch its way out and, and, and give me some warmth. So I'm going to say goodbye here. And I'll see you in a couple hours time after the fragrance has settled down to get to talk to you about the dry down. See you soon. About four hours have passed. And... Mitsuko is going strong. Actually, uh, been asking a friend of mine from Japan. You should also check out, by the way, my how to pronounce Japanese designers uh, videos and tutorials on my channel I, where I try to tackle and um, pronounce the 
it, it's really difficult to pronounce the Japanese. So actually, Mitsuko should be Mitsuko. And I'm still butchering the name because unless you're really not expert in Japanese, you can't do it. But it's Mitsuko, 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 Mitsuko. Mm, difficult. But so apparently the ko is child and the mitsu bit uh, can be a lot of different things from light to shine to star to just <sighs> enlightenment and a lot of female names end with a ko in Japanese. So it's fascinating how also in Japanese you can play with the symbology of names and what it all could mean. Now, and this is also something fascinating, how the smell... Well, basically, a hidden... Hidden is the right word. Um, meaning of the name can also mean secret. Not mystery as often as uh, told by many. It's actually more secret. So it, it's more of a, of a flat type of nature. You see, a mystery has a certain type of depth um, and a secret can be revealed. A mystery has more layers to it. A mystery can't be just solved with one simple notion of a concept of explanation. Mystery is deep. Secret is a bit more like, okay, it's covered, uncovered, secret is out. Um, but the secret here is, as I mentioned in the first part of my video, the this playing with time. And if we think about, again, 1919, and interestingly, I compared it to Chanel number no. 5, but I should have taken, here I have one of my testers of the Pure Perfume. I have a big one, 35 ml. Um, the testers come with these stoppers, sad, but that's what they do. So, um, 1919, 1921, Two years distance. This one came out first. This one followed. There's a similarity. Mostly the Lang Lang and the aldehyde type of sparkling opening, even though here it's not listed. How fascinating that Guerlain and Chanel, they were rivals. Everybody was Chanel's rival. I mean, Elsa Schiaparelli was Chanel's rival in fashion and Guerlain in perfumery. But what is fascinating, you know, they were... Chanel was supposed to copy Shalimar and um, Guerlain was supposed to copy number five and whoever got closer to the formula of the rival got to keep the formula name, the perfume in a certain way and release it. And guess what? Guerlain won. Well, Guerlain has been around also for generations before Chanel was around. So, of course, they had an advantage there, even though she had Ernest Beau on her side. And Guerlain got to keep the formula of Liu. And Liu is something that smells very close to number five. Perhaps in, 19, in, in the 20s, it... It, it was as that number five. Nowadays, after many reformulations, things have changed, but Liu still exists. Smell it. Fascinating. Um, but so, it's interesting to see this one following this one. They're both very 20s, except this one is so abstract. This one is like a, almost like a cubistic painting. Or cubist painting. And, and, and this one, because of the floral aspect to it and because of the peach it grounds it in a way um that uh it grounds it in a way that 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 only um hmm, only a guerlain can manage because of the shipra tone to it because of the oak moss in here and the vetiver mixed with the peach which is crazy um this one assumes a character that is so grounded, you could eat it almost, but it doesn't have a flavor. You want to eat it. It, it gives you hints of a flavor. There's a secret there. Yeah, here we go. The secret. The more I smell it on my skin and the more deep the secret is, because right when I think I'm going to unveil the secret, it's like, no, I'm not going to tell it to you. Not just yet. Another fascinating point is um, Guerlain's or, or Jacques' um, friendship with Ferrea. You know, I'm really bad with pronouncing French names, so I'm so sorry if I'm butchering the author's name. But uh, so the book the, that uh, Mitsuko is um, female protagonist in um, was published as a follow-up book to... Well, okay, so this is the thing. 
Guerlain gave a thank you to Ferrer by creating Mitsuko. Because Ferrer mentioned Jiki, another Guerlain fragrance, in another one of his novels. So it's kind of like, you know, hand shakes a hand. Now, nothing is coincidental. The fact that this background is a tartan or a plaid is for a reason. Because Mitsuko has a lover. The lover is British. This is a British tartan or plaid from Vivian Westwood. We have a British, which also have a very cold sense of humor, by the way, which I love, but it can be brutal at times. That culture blended in with what, what a French author considers to be Japanese culture. Nowadays, we would probably say cultural appropriation. How dare a person like that write something about Japanese people? But that's 1919. What can I tell you? Um, that blended with the Japanese culture in a novel is very fascinating. The novel was a bestseller back in its day. Today, not many people know it. Um, but nevertheless, the novel lives on because Mitsuko lives on. As long as the story and history of Mitsuko lives on, the novel will live on. And um, the combination of the British attitude, but, but described through the French author, which is another layer, kind of creates a very complex, almost triangle of passion, even though there's, you know, the, the Frenchman is the outside, it's the point of view, it's the POV of the, of the narration. So, of course, he's not part of the story, but he's the author writing about basically British attitude and Japanese attitude, and in particular, a Japanese woman who wants to break from Japanese traditional uh, conformist um, mannerisms. So the fragrance, as it is inspired by the character, also feels like it's breaking with norms. And of course, creating a shipra by adding to the oak moss the peach is breaking with norms completely. And that's why I chose a plaid as a background, because the patterns, they intersect and they break a structure that is either underneath or above. What Westwood so geniusly in this case does is almost a faded pattern here, the stripes. When two stripes intersect, then you get the saturation, like you see here. This is the full-blown saturation there. But just this line and this line alone, they almost look like they're inverted, they're negative. It's as if the saturated part is on the other side, but it's not. Only when they intersect do they reach the full saturation. And that's Mitsuko. It's an intersection of three, actually, ways of thought, of thinking. And if we translate it into the ingredients of this fragrance, then you could definitely say it's the peach, it's the oak moss, and I would say I'm still battling between Ilang Ilang and the rose. But since Guerlain is so famous for the rose as well, so probably I would have to go for the rose, even though to me the Ilang Ilang is more present, at least on my skin it, it blooms better. So I would personally go for Ilang Ilang intersection with peach, intersection with oak moss. And that gives me this full-blown saturation rather than just the faded. If we had just the oak moss it would be maybe just this little faded green line, you know what I mean? The peach is here, in this tone. And then we got the Ylang Ylang. Well, you would think rose is more red, but the Ylang Ylang is there as the red color. Intersected, they just blossom. I recommend this fragrance in its current formulation. I'm not even touching base on old form older formulations. doesn't matter at this point, really. Uh... I am very happy to know that uh, the current formulation on the market smells good. It works. This is the Eau de Parfum concentration. I do not know, you know, if we go really into numerology, then it becomes quite complex. The release date of this one is 1919. So if we add the numbers, 1 plus 9 is 10, plus 1 is 11, uh, plus 9, that's 20. 
that's a two. So two is kind of the number of Mitsuko, you know. Chanel number five is five. Chanel chose five because it's supposed to represent the, well, allegedly, the fifth sample that Ernest Beau presented to her and she liked it the most. But, but there's another story that says that uh, actually she wanted to name it number five, even though that perfume was not necessarily the fifth that she smelled or wasn't labeled as the fifth that Ernest Beau presented to her. But she wanted number five because from a numer numerologic or number point of view, numerology point, oh my gosh, um, five is the perfect combination of male and female, three being male, two being female. So in a way, if we're going to talk about this constant game between Chanel and, and Guerlain, maybe it began with the number two, even though this one to me is completely genderless, completely. The peach and the ylang ylang maybe make it a little bit more juicy. It, it, it's like turning, how do you turn an oak moss into something that can be mm, more subdued, less rough? Well, you add the peach, you add the rose, you add the ylang ylang. And hence, you could say it's also for girls, even though you know my statement, I mean, my position on that. And then it's as if Chanel came along with Ernest Bo and thought, okay, how do we turn this, not necessarily Mitsuko, but how do we turn a fragrance into something more cosmically universal? And it's as if to the number two, a number three was added. And then we get the number five. So... What I'm going to definitely try out is mixing the two and see what happens if we then mix a five with the two, we get a seven. Seven is also a very important number. But um, I'm wondering, I'm trying to figure out which fragrance could be a number three. And then to mix a number three with a number two, would we technically get a number five? Ha! Huh. That's my quest for the next weeks, years, maybe, because that's where the mystery begins. The secret has been unveiled. The truth is out. But now there's a mystery. And I really want to solve that mystery of the numbers between the Guerlains and the Chanel's. But on its own, and in its own right, of course, Mitsuko is amazing. I'm also very happy that the bottle is more or less kept reminiscent of the original version of the bottle. Uh, the sticker is really beautiful with its Art Nouveau slash Oriental, because the Orient was also quite popular back in, in the 1990s and 20s uh, design. And uh, because, you know, seeing Mitsuko in, in, in the B bottle, hmm, not so sure if that would be very pleasing. So I, I'm happy that it stayed the way it is now. I am considering, uh, because I'm liking this one so much, I am considering even perhaps getting the pure perfume and seeing how that works. Um, but as of now, I am on a strange boat. At times it's a wooden boat. Other times it is a submarine. And um, I'm traveling with it deep, 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 20,000 miles under the ocean under the, the sea or under the level of the sea and I'm encountering the weirdest, strangest creatures and some of them are aliens and then at times I'm on this wooden boat that's basically a pirate ship and it's each man on his own or for himself and there is mutiny all the time and there's danger all the time and everybody's really cold-blooded but then in the submarine we submerge and everybody's kind of trying to help each other survive the pressure and the only negative force out there is the weight of the ocean and the pressure of the ocean that is also so cold-hearted and cold-blooded because when it squishes you and decides to kill you, you're dead. There's no way that you can beat nature. And in a very cold-hearted and cold-blooded way, Mitsuko reminds me of that. It has at its core a cold heart. No matter how fluffed up and powdery and spicy it is around the edges, at its core, it's cold. And I love that about it. It, it, has, it has a heart of ice. It's, it's, it's just that icy in, in the center. It just doesn't warm up. As soapy as it even kind of tends to become, like all lotiony soapy on the skin after so many hours... 
and the peach definitely pops up together with the ylang ylang after a certain while at the beginning it's not there but now like you start to understand the fruity note of it and it's very synthetic by the way the peach it's it doesn't smell at all like a natural peach but i understand the concept of the peach in there so even though you get that kind of hint of warmth through the peach and the ylang ylang still that oak moss tells you it's boss and it has a cold heart but you love it because it's so cold and deep. It's like a cat. It comes when it wants to come to you. Otherwise, it's don't mess with it. <laughs> but it keeps you craving for more. You always want to cuddle that cat and you always want to come back to it. That's Mitsuko. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you like this review. If you have, please do thumb it up. Let me know what you think about the review and this fragrance in the comment section down below. Also, if you haven't yet, but consider, please subscribe to my channel here on YouTube. I'm also on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter also on Patreon, and I would like to take this opportunity to thank all my patrons for being my patrons and pledging every month. Thank you guys so much. Thanks to you. The channel keeps growing and living. So guys, until I see you next time, don't ever forget to never give up on love. Love you all. See you soon. Take care. Bye.